Daryl, thank you so much for coming up here. Um, we just want to start off with, I know I mentioned your name, but how did you get to know Jesus Christ, your Lord, personal Savior, and just the journey that God has taken you on? Well, I was uh, born and raised in a Christian home, and uh, for all you mothers out here, I was, remember my mom, I'd have her lead me to the Lord like 10, 12 times, and <laughs> you get baptized about, you know, eight or nine times, and then... And then in my life, you know, all I ever wanted was a house, a car, and a wife, and I had all those things, and then one day it just like, it blew up, and I had forgot the most important thing, and that was God in, our, in, in all of that. And I ended up getting divorced, and I remember just driving to the back with all the upbringing in a Christian home, my mom, my grandma, you know, my dad, I just ended up in the parking lot of a church, and I just cried and asked God to just forgive me for, you know, not allowing him to be a part of my life. And, and uh, then after that, I, God blessed me with a wife, and, and then it was just uh, got me in a good church that believes a lot like this church. We believed and we did, uh, we used to go into the halfway house and the hospital north in Idaho three days a week. We did Bible studies. We did AV meetings. And so God just began to plug me in to those types of things and it just kind of blossomed from there. And, and tell us from going from there, getting involved and uh, in, with the church and all the ministries, what was birthed inside of your heart for what particular ministry? And just kind of share about the prisoner ministry from there. Um, yeah, I've always just had a heart for people like the first the church that I got really got saved, started serving the Lord, is we did the halfway house and we started getting men out of prisons coming to the halfway house. And and then I got involved in prison ministry in Idaho and would go in with a, a another gentleman that was in our church that was going in there, he needed help. And so I started going with the him and then when I we actually moved to Tri Cities to help start a church here and uh, we did it for like five years. And at that time, uh, I met Bob Hagen, and he <laughs> just the way the Lord works. He just he just uh, encouraged me. Hey, I need help in the prisons. Well, that's kind of my heart beat. So he got he got me all signed up. And we'd go into Walla Walla, and that was amazing because uh, Walla Walla and its institution is one of the only ones in the United States that allowed men to go in and just walk to tears. We could go. They just open any door. we one week we'd go into the uh, death row and talk to Bob Yates, the man that was uh, killed all the people in Spokane, to talk to him. And, and we next week we'd go over to the you know, A block, B block. You just went wherever you want. And we met a lot of neat people. And, uh, and then uh, it just blossomed there. And then I took like a five-year, uh, because when you're in doing prison ministry, if you have a friend in prison, that you communicate, and you're, you're not really allowed to, you know, communicate with that prisoner, his family, and all those things. Well, uh, Bob and I, Bob introduced me to a man, his name is Preacher, and he's over in uh, Stafford Creek right now. And so we get together every Sunday. He calls in. We have Bible studies, and other people call in, and, and, and so it was just... Tell us, uh, Daryl, I'm sure that... You could go on and on about how many incredible salvations and testimonies you've seen through the prisoner ministry. Can you just mention just one of the prisoner uh, uh, testimonies that you were mentioning me, uh, to me earlier? Yeah, this is, a, and this is kind of home. I don't know, maybe about 20 years ago, there was, a, I believe he was a pastor or working in a church, and he had a wife and two young kids, a boy and a girl, and... Uh, there used to be a young man that walked by his house every day. And I heard this testimony when we went in to see uh, Ted, preacher, in Stafford Creek, my wife and I, and this young man was up in front telling this testimony. So the young man was walking back and forth every day, and in the, in the, you know how we Christians, good morning, young man, how are you? Lord bless you. Well, this one day that young man said, I'm going to go in there and make that man as miserable as I am because... The, come to find out his dad was either a pastor 
and he had a heart attack. He died, and that boy was just discouraged that, you know, God had allowed that to happen. And uh, so then the, uh, he went in and he shot the husband, and the two kids were there. And so they went to trial. He was convicted. He was sent to prison. Well, fast forward, you know, like 18 years later, Tina and I are in here in his, here in his testimony, this, this young man that actually killed and uh, he was telling about how he, he got saved in the ministry. Theodore and Ted Preacher was a part of that. And he came to the Lord, and he was so discouraged that, man, he just wanted to be able to do He felt so bad for what he had done and took that man's life. And he prayed, and he sought God, and they encouraged on him. He was just so discouraged and so depressed, but all the guys in prison encouraged him. And one day he got a letter in the mail from the family member that he had killed their father and it was a young boy and now he's like 18 or in his 20s and uh, he was able to he said he wanted to come and see him and the prisoner was real worried he didn't know how this was going to go down you know and but he was a christian now so they just told him just trust the lord and so he trusted the lord he came in they had their visit and uh when we were hearing this testimony the, the young man said that that boy, he said, what he really wanted to know is what his dad said to him just before he died. And before that all took place, the young man, the guy was so, when he come into the room, I'm so apologized, I'm so sorry for what I did. And he said, oh, you don't weep. And I just so feel so terrible. And the young man said, well, you don't have to worry. My mom and my sister and I, we've been praying for you for 20 years. We forgive you after you did it. And he just couldn't, I mean, take that kind of forgiveness and that love and that mercy and that grace. And then at the very end, he told that young man what his dad said. He said, your dad told me. He said, no matter what you do to me today, just know this, that I love you and God loves you. And he killed him. And so to hear that testimony there in Stafford Creek of that man it's just uh, you know the amazing the mercy and the grace and the love of god it's just uh, we can't hardly fathom it and uh i mean that's a incredible story of forgiveness and the power of forgiveness but also a reminder that as society has written off prisoners god has not forgotten them and uh daryl also is if you can just please uh, tell us how many years have you been in prison, uh, prison ministry and are you still currently doing it? And are the people of God invited to partake and help you out in this area? Oh, yeah. I started in Idaho, did it for five, six years, moved here. And then I met Bob and Bob's been doing it for 26 years, 30 years, doing prison ministry. And he just called me up about two years ago and got me to going to down to Oregon. We go to two rivers and it's like once a month on a Tuesday. And so he's been doing that. And so you're all if you want to do prison ministry, just get a hold of Bob and he would be more than happy because they do need lots of help. There's lots of men and they just love seeing people from the outside and just love on them and and it's, it's, it is an amazing ministry. And I just want to encourage everyone as well is that Daryl wasn't in prison himself. He just had a heart for the people that were lost and forgotten. So don't write yourself off saying, well, I don't know if I can relate. God can use you for those because people can see love and care through each and every one of us. And so God is able to use him, even though he wasn't in that area himself. But God is using him mightily in that in Jesus name. So that's just encouragement for everybody. Thank you, Daryl, so much for that powerful, powerful testimony. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.